In this video, I'm going to show you guys a slightly quicker way to create a playlist in RetroArch for your PlayStation Classic build. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. All right guys, so here we are on our PC and as I mentioned, I'm going to be showing you guys a slightly faster way of creating a playlist for your PlayStation Classic. Now this will come in handy, especially after we've done our Auto Bleem release, uh, the latest 0.7 build, and how we can now integrate our playlist from RetroArch into the Evolution UI uh, user interface. So this is just gonna make that process a little bit quicker if you haven't. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because the scan feature on the PlayStation Classic can take quite a while. Uh, downloading thumbnails, all those sort of things can take a little bit of time. And sometimes the servers aren't super fast, so this might speed things up just a little bit. So in order to do this, what we're gonna need first and foremost is we're gonna need RetroArch installed on our PC. It's not difficult to do that. All you gotta do is hop onto your web browser and just do a Google search for RetroArch and just download the appropriate version for your computer. Uh, you're either gonna be using a 64-bit or you're gonna be using a 32-bit version. Uh, in my case, I've got the 64-bit and I've already got that installed on my computer. I'm going to go ahead and open up RetroArch. Now, while that's opening up, I do wanna make note that uh, the default area where it wants to install RetroArch, you're gonna to wanna to leave everything the way it is. Don't change the pathway folders, don't change anything. Just let RetroArch install exactly where its default settings want it to be installed. And I will show you how to access any of the information that we need and how to locate those files um, because they're not gonna be located in your program files. So we've got our RetroArch installed on our PC. Everything is looking fantastic. Uh, so what we need to do in this case, first and foremost, is we need to download the cores which are going to be uh, associated with whatever playlist we're going to be creating. So in this case, we just have to scroll on down to Online Updater. Now because RetroArch is connected on our computer, it is connected to the network, you can download all your cores right from within RetroArch. It's super quick, super easy, uh, makes things much easier, and it's uh, something that I'm really looking forward to seeing. Um, getting the ability to somehow connect wirelessly on our PlayStation Classics. I don't know what's happening and I don't want to say anything, but I'm really hoping that's a feature that's going to be coming our way relatively soon. So, Noel, I'm not the only person who feels that way. Uh, lots of people do. But what we need to do is go into our online updater and then we need to go into our core updater and it's going to go ahead and download the index so that way we can see all the available cores uh, that we can choose from. Uh, as you can see, there's a bunch. So, for example, if you're going to be doing an arcade build, it's got the CPS-1, it's got the CPS-2 emulator, it's got a Neo Geo emulator, it's got everything that you could possibly want. We can scroll on down, you've even got things like ports for Cave Story, you've got uh, Doom, you've got all of these potential uh, cores that are available. What we want to do is we want to find the one in which we're going to use, and in this case, I'm personally going to be doing uh, Game Boy Color. So I'm going to add a Game Boy Color playlist to my existing build. I need to find an emulator for that. So we scroll on down to Nintendo and we just have to choose the emulator or the core in which we want to use. I like using this one right here, the Nintendo Dash Game Boy slash Color Game Bat. I'm going to go ahead and press enter on that. It's going to extract it, download it, and boom, we are done. I now have that core installed right in RetroArch. It's there for me. I don't have to do anything else. The next thing that we're gonna go ahead and do is we are gonna go ahead and download the thumbnails. So we need to back on out of here. We need to go down to the thumbnails updater. We're gonna scroll on down and find the console in which we wanna get our uh, thumbnails from. So we need to scroll down to Nintendo, Game Boy Color .zip. There it is. We're gonna hit enter. It's gonna go ahead and download that. It's nice and quick. It just downloads the zip. And not only does it do that, but it'll, it'll extract it for us. It'll put it in the proper file, it'll put it in the proper pathway, and you're good to go. So now it's extracting everything. I'm just going to quickly fast forward through this because this can take a couple minutes. Um, but yeah, really awesome. We're going to go ahead and skip through this. Excellent. So now that that's done, that's perfect. We don't want to do anything else in RetroArch just yet. What we need to do is we need to make sure that we've got 
uh, the all the ROMs that we want, all the games that we want on our Auto Bleem or on our Bleem Sync build, whatever it is you happen to be using. For the purposes of this video, I am using my Auto Bleem build. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull those folders up. Uh, I've got my Auto Bleem build right here. I can bring it over, there it is. And I've got uh, my ROMs folder as well that I'm gonna be transferring from right here. Perfect. So as you can see, I've got all of my Game Boy Color ROMs. I need to go onto my USB drive. I'm gonna open up my ROMs folder. And as you can see, I've got a few different consoles in there already. Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, NES, Sega Genesis, and SNES. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new folder. We're gonna click folder, and I'm gonna call this Game Boy Color. I'm gonna hit enter. And then all I need to do is I need to grab all my games that I want from here. I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom, select them all, I'm gonna copy them over into this folder here. I'm gonna let it transfer in, so this will take just about uh, 10 to 15 seconds. We're just gonna quickly skip through this. Perfect, so now that we have all of our games on there, we're gonna go ahead and close the folder that had the games or wherever our directory is where we keep our ROMs, close that. Our Auto Bleem build now has our Game Boy Color games in it, so I can actually go ahead and minimize this because we don't need it at this point in time. Now what we need to do is we need to create this playlist. So we've got our thumbnails, we've got our core, we've got everything that we're gonna need. Now we need to scan the directory. So we're just gonna scroll on back. We're gonna go back just like you would on the PlayStation Classic. You're gonna go over to the scan directory. We're gonna hit X. We're gonna to go to the drive in which it's sitting. So my uh, Auto Bleem build is currently in my I drive. I'm gonna hit enter there. Then I've just gotta to go to my ROMs folder. Then I've just gotta go and select my Game Boy Color folder. And then right from here, I can scan this directory. If I hit enter, it's gonna go ahead and scan everything. Now, as you're gonna see, it does scan substantially quicker than if you were to scan it on your PlayStation Classic. This will probably take 25% of the time that it takes on your PlayStation Classic, maybe even less. Uh, it is substantially quicker, especially if you're gonna be doing a large load of them. Now there is another method in which you can use. For example, if you're gonna be using CD, uh, Sega CD for example, or some other CD based consoles on your RetroArch build or on your Auto Bleem build, they don't work really well with the scanner. Same with arcades, they do not work well with the scanner. There is another method in which to do that and I am not gonna make a video about it. I'll leave some links in the description to a couple people who will. I think Patent Plays is gonna be doing a video on it uh, and there's another YouTuber as well, uh, a much smaller YouTuber who's done a video on it. I'll leave links to those in the description down below if you guys are interested in making some playlists for uh, the CD-based consoles. It's not difficult. Uh, essentially what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go into your Windows button here, you're gonna toggle to desktop menu and you're going to be building them right within, you're gonna be building them right here. So you right click, you create new playlist, you have to enter a specific name for the console, you hit okay, and then you just select your directory and it'll find it from there. But like I said, in this video, I'm not gonna be doing that. I'm just gonna be focusing on the RetroArch style uh, right from within the app. So that's it for that. We've scanned that directory. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and what we're probably gonna notice is that there is a Game Boy Color uh, option here, here it is. All the games are created. All the, not all of the games have uh, the images there, but most of them do. If it couldn't find something, you're gonna end up with a couple games uh, that aren't able to match. But most of the games do have a match there. So as you can see, we've got uh, a couple outliers, but most of the games are there with their, uh, with their thumbnail. So what that indicates to me is that a playlist has been created. The thumbnails are there and the ROMs list is working. So before we go on any further, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are going to transfer this playlist and the thumbnails from our computer-based RetroArch folders onto our USB drive where our AutoBleam build is. So what we need to do is we're gonna go ahead and minimize RetroArch. We're gonna open up our USB, which is right here. We're gonna go right to the root of our drive. And then what we also need to do is we need to find our directory for RetroArch on our PC. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our PC. We're gonna go into our C drive because that's where it would have been installed. And what we're gonna need to do is, as you can see, some of my hidden folders are being displayed. If your hidden files do not get displayed, you just have to go into view and you just have to check this hidden items here. So if I uncheck that, those folders will go away 
but you want them to be visible so that way you have access to it. So you want to be able to see those hidden files. We're gonna scroll down and double click on users. Then we're gonna go into user again, and then we're gonna look for app data. So this is the hidden folder that we need. We're gonna double click on app data. We're gonna to go to roaming. We're gonna scroll down and we're gonna find RetroArch. And this should look familiar to you guys. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna make them both full screen. So this should look familiar. This is all the different files that we've been working with in the past. You've got our thumbnails folder, we've got our cores folder, we've got configs, cheats, assets, info, all that information is here. And it should look the same as when we double click on the RetroArch folder on our AutoBleam build. As you can see, we've got our assets, auto config, cheats, con all, all those things are all there. So what we need to do, we need to go into our playlist, which is right here and we need to locate to make sure that our Game Boy Color playlist is there. So it is. Now another thing that we're gonna need for this is we're going to need the program called Notepad++. This is absolutely important. If you don't have it, I'll leave a link in the description down below, but download Notepad++ because we are gonna have to make some edits to this config file in order for it to work properly on the PlayStation Classic. So we're gonna go ahead and edit that with Notepad++. It's gonna pop up and this will look a little bit intimidating, but believe me, it is not intimidating. So we've got all this information here. It is gonna essentially indicate what games are, where they're located, what they should be connected with, what image file they should be connected with. All those sort of things are there. Totally fine. The problem is that the directories are not complete. So it built the playlist based off of the directory off of an iDrive, which would be from where our AutoBleam build is plugged into our PC, but that's not where it's going to live on our PlayStation Classic. So we have to change that. And essentially what we need to do is we need to change the path of this, of the ROMs folder essentially. So it says iDrive and then backslash backslash ROMs backslash backslash Game Boy Color. And then it says the game title. Now, first we don't want two backslashes. We only want one and we want it to be a forward slash. So we're gonna change that. And then additionally, we wanna change this iDrive to a different uh, directory as well. So this sounds like it's complicated, but it's not. All you need to do is go onto this find button. We're gonna click that. Then you have to replace. And what we want to do is we want to replace the i colon, which is going to be the base directory. And we're gonna replace it with a forward slash, then media. Once you do that, you can go ahead and replace all in all open documents. And the reason why I'm saying to do it in all open documents is because let's say you created six playlists. You can open them all up in Notepad++ and you can change them all in one shot. It's nice and easy. As long as those are open up, you'll have different tabs here. Uh, as long as those documents are open, you'll be able to make the changes to all of them in one shot and it makes things so much quicker. So we're gonna go ahead and replace all in all open documents. And as you can see, it is now done that. You can see we've got forward slash media and then it goes back to backslash backslash ROMs. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to get rid of those two backslashes and we want to replace them just with a single forward slash. It, we're gonna do that again with replace all in all open documents, assuming we had say a Super Nintendo one up, uh, PlayStation one up, uh, Genesis one up, whatever it happened to be. Uh, we could replace them all there. We go ahead and do that. And as you can see now, we've got all of the proper directory set up for every single one of the games all the way through. It's gonna be uh, forward slash media, forward slash ROM. So that is the correct directory. Now we just have to close this. We just have to save this. We can close out of this as well. We no longer need this open. Then all we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this and we're gonna drag it over to our uh, playlist folder right here. And that's it. So now when we open up the playlist on our PlayStation uh, Classic AutoBleam build, it will be located here. Now we're not done because if you remember, we downloaded those thumbnails onto our uh, desktop, but they're not on our PlayStation Classic. So we need to go back into our RetroArch area. We need to go to the thumbs thumbnails tab and we need to grab our Game Boy Color folder and we're gonna just grab this and we're gonna copy this over to the USB drive. Now, this will take a little bit of time as well. I'm just gonna fast forward through this real quick. All right, boom, and we are done. 
Now we've got in our thumbnails folder, we've got all of our different thumbnails, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color. This is the newly added one. So now we know that it is on our USB drive and everything should work now. We've got our games on our AutoBleam build. We've got the thumbnails now on the AutoBleam build and we've got that newly created playlist which should link everything all up nice and cleanly together. All that's left for us to do is to take that uh, AutoBleam build out of our computer and plug that into our PlayStation Classic and test it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now and we're gonna switch over. All right guys, so we've got our AutoBleam build up and running right now. We've got everything on display here. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna take a look in RetroArch just to make sure that that playlist is working properly. So we're gonna press square. Retro Boot is gonna go ahead and load up. And then we're gonna take a look at our playlists. And as you can see, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, which is what we were hoping for. Beautiful, it is there. We've got our Game Boy, NES, uh, SNES, Genesis, and our PlayStation. So we know that it's there. We're gonna go ahead and back out. We're gonna quit RetroArch. We're gonna jump right into AutoBleam. And again, we're gonna press L2 and select. And now you can see Game Boy Color is available for selection. We're gonna go ahead and press X on that. And now you can see all of our Game Boy Color games are displayed. I mentioned earlier that there are a few games that don't have the artwork. Now this is something that you can go ahead and tweak. You can remove the games, whatever you wanna do. The games still play fine, but this is what it'll display. So it'll show a little retro boot logo saying, hey, there's no image here. It's just kind of like a placeholder. As you can see, the name of the game is up on the top. And then the retro uh, arc logo is right in the middle with a black kind of casing there. That's what you're going to get for any games that don't actually have matching artwork. Uh, so you can either go in and fix that and try to find the artwork and then load it in there and, and change the config files. Or if you're okay to just remove the game if it's not a game you're going to play or whatever it happens to be. Uh, or you can just leave it the way it is and if you're fine with that, that's fine too. So just wanted to show you guys that. But yeah, this is pretty much it. So now that is the easiest way that I think to get your playlists loaded up from your computer onto your PlayStation Classic. Again, the reason why it's gonna be quicker is once you start getting into a large volume of games, the scanning feature on the PlayStation Classic takes absolutely forever. You could sit there for literally hours to do a thousand games. If you got an entire playlist of Super Nintendo games, you're gonna be there for like three hours. It's brutal. So this is a much faster way to do it. You can build your playlists in under five minutes and you can do multiple playlists. So if you want to do uh, NES, Super Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Genesis, Arcade, whatever it happens to be all at one shot, it'll take you like five minutes to create those playlists. It'll take you two or three minutes to edit the playlist and then it'll take you as much time as it would have taken you anyways to transfer those uh, playlists over and the um, and the thumbnail artwork. So that's pretty much it for this, guys. I hope it speeds things up for you. I hope it makes this a little bit easier for you and that you guys uh, you guys are able to get things up and running quickly. If you guys have any questions, as always, leave them in the comment section below. I do my best to try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and I will talk to you guys again on the next one.